Hey YouTube, it's Nikki with Our Simple Life and today we are going to be planning our garden. I am so excited to get this growing season started. I feel so accomplished when I come home in the evenings and work in my garden and pull out a basket of harvest that I'm going to be cooking for dinner that night. Um, right now the garden's growing a little slow um, but we do have some broccoli and lettuces um, cabbage is growing, but not ready yet. Um, I think that's about it. So it's not moving really fast, but in the summertime, that's when I love to just come home from work and relax in my garden, prune a little bit, harvest a little bit, and head inside to cook. So today we're going to be planting that garden. Um, you can't just walk outside and throw a bunch of seeds in the ground and then expect to have um, full productivity if you don't plan it out because you may plant your seeds at the wrong time of the year. Um, you may overlap some of them. You may not give them enough growing space. So that's a, something that we're going to go over today. So the first thing that you want to do is make a drawing of your growing space. <clears throat> so that's what I did here. These are the beds that I have. And I went ahead and wrote in the perennials that I have. I do have um, an asparagus bed that does not move. It stays there every year. So I will have asparagus in that bed. Also, I will have raspberries in the bed next to it. We don't dig those up and move them to another bed. They stay there from year to year. Um, and then what I did was I wrote in some of the things that I planted in the fall that will carry um, forward into the summer and spring growing season, like my garlic and onions. They will need to stay in the ground um, and develop throughout the growing season. So I went ahead and wrote those in. <clears throat> okay, so after you have that, you what I didn't follow my own advice, but you may want to go ahead and put in your structures. Like if you have trellises that are already up and you don't want to move them, you can go ahead and draw those on your diagram so that you know where to plant the climbing things, like your small melons, or cucumbers or tomatoes if you want to use those to stake them up or peas and beans. So you'll go ahead and have those. And then what you want to do is make five, six, seven, eight copies because you will um, decide to move some things. You'll want to do a final version after you've gotten it marked up and, um, and set. <coughs> so what I did was I went ahead and made a diagram and wrote in the things that I currently have growing because I do, don't do want to kick them out of their growing space before it's necessary so that um, I'm filling in the holes um, where I can as I'm planting the new things. So this is my current um, growing map. Next, what you wanna do is go through your seeds and decide what you want to plant. So I laid out everything that I wanted to plant and then I made a listing of it. Um, and I highlighted those that were the most important. And as I made space for them on my diagram, I checked it off the list. So I have all my seeds laid out and I have them sectioned into um, what type they are. Peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, melons. There are some things that really like the hot weather, like your melons and gourds. Those, of course, want, you want to plant them last. So I took my listing and the, the seed packets of what I need to plant first and I started writing them in onto my diagram. So this will tell me where it's going, how much space I have allotted for it. Now some people like to make a long row and have a bumper crop so you'll have a, a high production. 
or you may want to do it a little differently if you're planting different varieties um, to seed save. So if I'm growing two different kinds of cucumber and I want to seed save them, I'm going to do my best to separate them at two separate places in, within my garden. I'll also go in with the organza bags and put them over the blooms once I've hand pollinated and seal them off so that um, the bugs can't come in and repollinate and risk um, tainting the seeds. Also, um, we are a big fan of squash and so I like to grow three, four, five different varieties of squash, but I don't want them to cross pollinate. So um, as well as succession planting, I'll also separate them and put, you know, my eight ball zucchini in one spot and my crooknut yellow squash or my patty pan squash um, or my winter squashes in different areas of my garden to kind of separate um, the, the cross pollination between them. But what that also does is if you have a squash bug that comes and gets in your garden and they find some of your squash, you might also prevent them from finding all of your squash. They might just find a couple of plants and not bother your other varieties. So, um, you know, it's all a matter of preference how you want to grow your garden because your garden ought to bring you joy. So um, there's, that's just some little insight. So, um, marking them off as I plant, as, um, uh, marking them off from my list as I write them in to make sure that I'm able to grow my favorite varieties. <clears throat> now, I will take the seed packets and, um, see when they need to be planted and I will write that in on my calendar and, that will give me when I need to plant. I will also mark down the latest germination date because if I have some seeds that don't germinate, then I can go back and try to replant. Um, instead of waiting for a month, I'll, I'll have that information already in front of me when I need to try to go back and replant. So to go over, um, your calendar, you want to make sure that you have your first frost date um, marked on your calendar. So mine happens to be March the 15th. So I have that marked down. And then um, from there, you can write in what seeds you're going to plant after your first frost date, if they are direct sown outside, or um, I'm going to be starting some seeds inside. So I will work backwards from that first frost date. For instance, my tomatoes need to be planted inside um, four to six weeks, or six to eight weeks before that first frost date so that I have um, plants established to go outside after that frost date. So I will back up six to eight weeks from my first, my last frost date and start my seeds. I'll put that on the calendar when I need to start my tomato seeds. Now I will also, I will also do the same thing for my peppers, but now peppers have to start eight to 12 weeks before your last frost date indoors. So I'm really approaching that date if I've not passed it already. Um, but I do have some, uh, a few peppers already started inside. They have not germinated yet. So I'm gonna be doing another round of peppers as well. So I wanna go over a couple of the things that I'm going to be growing in my garden with you so that um, this will give you an insight on maybe some new varieties that you would like to try or um, just um, follow along with me to see the progress if you're growing the same things. So one thing that I know that I need to plant outdoors this weekend are peas because we don't expect really heavy frost for the rest of the, the um, season before the last frost date. So I'm going to be planting the Lillian's caseload peas and Lincoln peas. Kelvin, 
Governor Wonder Peas. I got some Amish Snap Peas in a seed swap and some Dwarf Gray Sugar Peas also and some Sugar Daddy Snap Peas. And I also saved some seeds from Alaska peas last year, but I didn't prevent them from cross-pollinating, so I haven't shared them with anyone else. I'm going to try to grow these again and make sure that they are true to their variety and take better care of them this upcoming year. That's one thing that I want to do a better job of um, seed saving this next year. So I will be either making or buying some organza bags for my blooms so that I can make sure that I'm saving seeds that are true to their variety. One of the first things that I'm going to be putting in my garden this early spring is onions so that they can develop throughout the season. Now I did plant some in the fall that's still in the garden and um, those will be ready this summer so I want to go ahead and plant some of these so that they are ready in the fall and they're more of a succession plant. And I'm going to be planting my beans in my garden first because they do um, tolerate a, the cooler weather a little better than say my melons and corn and okra. So the first things that I'm going to be focusing on are um, dragon tongue beans from in my gardener. And Toya edamame soybeans. I grew some, I got some of these last year and then wound up ordering another packet, but um, I planted some and strictly just kept the seeds from these so that I can have a larger crop for production this year. I'm going to be trying the Scarlet Runner beans from in my gardener. The cannellini beans. I think these are good, good in soups and white bean chili. The Cherokee black pole bean. I'll use those in Mexican dishes. I got those from a um, I did a seed swap, but the Buffalo Seed Company sent me some seeds for that seed swap. So um, be on the lookout. I'm going to be hosting another um, seed swap in the next couple of months. It'll be structured a little differently than the last one that I'm mailing out tomorrow. It'll be a round robin just to try something a little different and see if it works um, better. Um, I had great production from the purple hole pink eye cow peas. Um, these are really good for my climate and I wound up, um, we wound up having so many of these fresh during the growing season and I put up several, several quarts of these as well. So we've been eating on them all winter long. And then I think I mentioned the Scarlet Runner beans already, but I got another pack from, um, from a seed swap. Let's see, next I'm going to put in my cucumbers. Last year I tried the Muncher cucumbers and they were so good. I also did the straight eight, but I didn't like the taste as well. So I'm definitely gonna stick with the Muncher cucumbers. I did save several, several seeds from these, but I have already shared them in other seed swaps. So I want to hold on to these so I can, I can make sure that I grow my own. Now I, I ordered the Ashley cucumber from in my gardener late in the season because they were out of so many different seeds. Um, but I did get it late in the season. I planted some for a fall, um, harvest, but I didn't plant them early enough. So I got one off of the vines and it was really good. So I'm definitely gonna be growing these again as well. Um, next, I'm going to be putting in red mal Malabar spinach from in my gardener. I also got some in a seed swap. Um, I've not tried this before, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to having some greens during the summertime as well. 
and um, we'll see how that does. I have heard that this variety of spinach does really well in the heat and here in growing zone 8A, um, we do have very hot summers. Um, moving on, oh, I, I have another variety of cucumber that I'm going to plant that slipped out of its stack. So I'm also going to be growing the Armenian long yard long cucumber as well. I'd like to get a hold of the silver slicers that Jess from Roots and Refuge recommends, but I have not run across those just yet. I have so many seeds in my seed bank. I don't want to go out and buy and put more of a strain on the the availability of seeds right now. So next, I'm going to be planting my squashes. Um, you heard me say, I love, 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 love squash. And um, I didn't have much production last year. I don't know if it was just the, the pests that were really wearing on them, but I'm gonna try several different varieties this year so that we can try to get some to eat on a regular basis. So the first one that I'm gonna try from Baker Creek is the Early Prolific Straight Neck Summer Squash. I love yellow squash. Um, I'm also gonna try the Crook Neck Summer Squash from In My Gardener. The Black Beauty Zucchini Summer Squash. Um, that's typically what you would find at any grocery store. Um, new to my garden this year, I'm going to try the eight ball squash, zucchini squash. So I'm curious to, to try that. That looks very fun. And I'm also going to be um, trying the um, early white bush patty pan or scallop squash and the yellow um, scallop squash. And I've not really um, grown winter squashes before just because I don't know how to cook with them. Um, but I thought I would venture out because I got some in a seed swap this year from Mead Family Farms. And she sent the North Georgia Candy Roaster Squash. And I've been researching this and I have found that they get really, really large. So I'm excited to try that this year. Um, of course, I'll be putting in my tomatoes that I am excited about. Um, I wanted to try a variety of tomatoes. Um, so I'm going to try the persimmon tomato. This is a really large tomato. Um, I thought it said how big they get up to, but it, did, it doesn't right here. But Jess has grown these and they get very large. Um, I wanted to try the triple crop um, just for the production um, to make sure that we have tomatoes on hand. I'll be um, dicing some tomatoes and, um, and canning them. I'm also going to try the early cascade tomato for the same reason. Mm. Apparently, I didn't sort through these very well. I'm going to try the Green Doctor's tomato. Um, this is, it says it has high yields of lime green cherry tomatoes. Um, my kids love cherry tomatoes. They argued over who would get to the garden first last year and they would clean off anything that was ripe. So I'm going to grow several varieties this year. I'm going to do the Green Doctor's for green. I'm going to do the Berries Crazy Cherry, which I also have another Instagram friend that is sending me some of those to try. And I'm also going to um, do the Sweet 100s that my kids just loved last year. I've never grown a yellow tomato, so the Dr. Witchies or White Cheese Yellow Tomato comes highly recommended from In My Gardener. So I'm going to try the yellow tomato this year as well. And the San Marzano Lungo number two, I'm going to grow this for my tomato paste and, um, and sauces. 
So that will cover all of our tomatoes, but kind of in the same category. I'm going to try the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. And I also got some pineapple ground cherry from um, Fremont 3 on Instagram in a um, seed swap. So I'd like to compare them and, and see if I can tell a taste difference. Now from in my gardener, they have a mystery seed that I am really excited to try. Um, I have opened them up and they, they look like tomato seeds, but obviously it doesn't list what variety. So in this mystery pack, um, I don't know if you can, if it's focusing, but these look like tomato seeds. Um, obviously they don't list the variety because it's a mystery. Um, but I thought that was very fun and cute. Um, it says, all you need to grow this mystery seed is water, soil, care, and sun. So, um, I'm going to make a special place for that in my garden as well. And moving on to the heat loving, um, crops. I've got several peppers that I want to grow. I'm going to be growing a paprika pepper that I got in a seed swap from Beat of a Different Plum on Instagram. So thank you so much for sharing those with me as well. I've got pimento peppers, another sweet pepper. We're not real fond of heat um, in our peppers. I will grow a few just for seasonings, but for the most part, we like sweet peppers. Um, the most. I got California Wonder bell peppers that I saved seeds from last year. We are going to be trying the Shishito peppers and the Habanada peppers from Baker Creek. And then I also got a pack of Anaheim chili peppers last year that I also saved seeds for. And I'm also going to be trying the Natapeno peppers so that I can put in mild salsa so that my kids can eat, eat it as well. Um, another one of my favorite things out of the garden is okra. And I grew probably 15 or 20 plants of okra last year and I found that it was not enough. Um, we could eat okra almost every day of the week. And with our household being so large, I'm feeding like seven, eight people every day. So um, this year I'm going to try the heavy hitter okra. I was really blown away with the production that Baker Creek said um, comes on this plant. So I'm going to grow several of them and hopefully have enough to put up for fried okra for the winter time because we do love okra so much um, in soups and standalone fresh fried, boiled, uh, pickled, you name it. We love, love okra. Um, the uh, Mexican sour gherkin cucumber. We're going to try that. We've never grown it before, so we'll see how that does in our garden. And the Orchard Baby corn. It's a sweet corn, but it comes really small, so I'm hoping that that will grow well for us. And it's only a 65-day variety, so that's a really short growing season for corn. I also wanted some popcorn, so um, I did a seed swap or a seed wish, and I ended up receiving the mini pink popcorn, so I'm excited to try that as well. Also, I'm going to do a few varieties of sunflowers. This is the mammoth sunflower that I got in a seed swap, so I'm definitely excited about that, not only for the 
production, but the beauty in sunflowers. I do believe that your garden should be a place that you enjoy being, and that definitely brings joy to my garden to have flowers dispersed throughout um, for the beauty, but also to attract the pollinators. That will help you have a higher production if you have flowers within your garden to bring in those pollinators. I'm gonna be growing several different kinds of melons this year. I did not pull out, but I do want to do pumpkins. Um, I've never grown pumpkins and never really cooked with pumpkins until this last year. I had someone give my daughter a pumpkin and so I cut it open, I saved seeds from it, I cooked with it, and it wound up making the most delicious pumpkin muffins that I will put on my channel um, coming up here soon as well. So some of the melon varieties that I'm going to be growing are the Sherilyn melons. I got a pack and a seed swap, so I'd like to try. I have seen where it has a smooth um, skin, not rippled like a normal cantaloupe, but the inside takes, tastes like a cantaloupe. But it also said that um, the flesh will change flavors. So if you pick it fresh, it's it's a mild melon, but if it sits on the counter for a week, it, it really um, sweetens up and has a very distinguished different taste. So I'm excited about that. The Crimson Sweet Melon I grew last year, and these are from uh, Baker Creek. Um, I, I grew three different types of melon last year. I grew the Garden Leader, which is the big oblong um, watermelons. I grew the Crimson Sweet that's like a medium size watermelon, and I grew the Black Diamond watermelon. And flavor-wise, the Crimson Sweet was definitely our favorite, so that is going to be a repeat in our garden. I have heard very raving reviews about the Sugar Baby Bush watermelon, so we're going to be trying that one this year. And the Moon and Stars watermelon, I want to see how that compares to some of our other favorites. And um, by popular demand, we are going to try the Kajari melon. Um, that comes highly recommended as well. Okay. Oh, and the Minnesota Midget cantaloupe I got in a seed swap, so I would like to try that as well. <coughs> And then a few odds and ends. I got some stevia seeds in a seed swap. So I want to try that in pots and see how that grows. I tried loofahs last year, but I think where I put it, the ground was just not good soil. I tried to amend it with some compost. It was our house, not exactly our house pad, but that red hard clay dirt and I don't think it had enough compost. So I'm going to make some room for these loofahs on the edge of my garden so that I can trellis them outside so it doesn't take as much room, but it also has good soil to grow in. I grew birdhouses, uh, birdhouse gourds last year and got a good production off of them. However, I would like another string of birdhouse um, gourds for the birds and so I saved seeds from that variety and I'm going to be growing more this upcoming year. Something that I got in a seed swap I'm really excited about trying is the double purple auric. I may be um, saying that wrong, the O-R-A-C-H, but this is um, has so many health benefits but not only that, um, it is great in floral arrangements. Not that I've grown a whole lot for floral arrangements, but this year I am going to branch out and try some new varieties. So I did grow zinnias and marigolds last year. I know that those are super easy to grow, so I am going to be growing some more zinnias and branching out as well. I did go and get some um, gladiola bulbs yesterday and I'm going to be planting those soon but a couple of different varieties I got some in seed swaps and some that I ordered from Baker Creek and in my gardener 
So I'm going to try to make room for all of these. I do have several flower beds um, per, on the perimeter of our house and some out in the yard. So I'm going to try those as well. So I got a pom-pom dahlia that I'm going to try to grow. Normally you grow these from bulbs, um, but um, since I got seeds, I'm gonna try to grow, start these indoors and see how they transplant. Um, I got a Fiesta blend of Cleom, I guess is how you say it, in a seed swap. So we're gonna try those. They, um, I did some research and they are a very beautiful flower. I got some lemon basil. That will um, have a dual purpose. The lemon basil I'll grow in the garden, but also this is a great filler in floral arrangements. I also got Love in a Mist um, in a seed swap, so I'm curious to see how that grows. The Seashells Cosmos. Um, I have read where Cosmos are very popular and easy to grow, so we'll be trying that. Um, mixed variety of zinnias. The polar bear zinnia. Mazurkia zinnia, I guess I'm saying that right. I love the dual colors in that. The Eldorado zinnia. Y'all, I am a sucker for the coral color, so I'm excited about that. The exquisite zinnia. I love the little yellow flowers on the inside of that. Um, Fizzy Rose Picote Cosmo. A Hungarian Blue Poppy that I got in a seed swap. Blue Balloon Flower. Korean hyssop. I know that that has a medicinal use as well as looking beautiful as a filler in bouquets. Falling in Love Poppy. I picked up some Hollyhock from Lowe's. The Tornado Red Coxcomb. I'm also on the lookout for some Celosia. The Scarlet Peony Poppy. The Creamy Peony Poppy. Gusford Supreme Aster. La France Carnation. And then I, I got this in a seed swap, the Lupine Russell's Hybrid. The Bells of Ireland. Um, these are not a perennial, but they seed themselves very well. So I'm excited about that. The Perennial Sweet Pea, Purple Prince Zinnia. I'm going to grow these in pots. The Pale Pink Dwarf Milady Aster. I got a wildflower mix for the bees that I'll probably put out along the road. The swan's down poppy. I love white flowers. They are just so classic to me. Mixed yellow sunflowers and more of the Russell Lupine mix. So I've got a lot of work to do this year, but also a lot of fun. Y'all, I look forward to every day coming home from work and getting in my garden. It is the best end of the day to bring relaxation and recuperation and also contributes to our table. So I'm so excited about this gardening season. I cannot wait for you to join me and come along and hopefully I gave you some insight on planning your own garden this year. I hope that you guys all have happy growing and I will see you um, in the next video. If you guys like this content, please hit that uh, thumbs up button so that YouTube knows that you like this type of content and hit that subscribe button so that you can see what else is growing this year and throughout my garden and the flowers and what we're gonna be doing with them as well as other um, homemaking projects around the house. 
So um, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me and great luck in your garden planning this year. Bye-bye.